The Wii and Wii U had some of the most interesting controllers in their generations. Because of all their weird and interesting features, they both needed games to justify their controllers and show how all the features could be practically used in games. The games to do this were Wii Sports and Nintendo Land, and were commonly bundled in with their respective consoles. Now, what's my background with these games? In 2014, I got the Super Mario 3D World and Nintendo Land Wii U bundle, the best one. I had so much fun with both of these games, and they're both easily some of my favorite games on the Wii U. However, I'm one of the, like, two people who's never owned an original Wii, so I didn't have Wii Sports. I'd played it at friends' houses and always had a ton of fun with it, but I never owned it myself. Until I saw it at a flea market a couple of months ago, and look at me now, spending $25 on a game everyone else got for free. What the f*** am I doing? I'm gonna be comparing both of these to find out which one's the better game, and which one goes in the pile of shame. Nintendo Land. It's Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land is the better single player game. I mean, it's kind of hard for it not to be. Nintendo Land has three short campaigns that can be played in both multiplayer and single player, and six single player games. Some of these single player mini games aren't the best, but still, half the game is designed around single player. The three co op games are just as much fun in single player as they are multiplayer. They do a wonderful job of simplifying the games they're based on for a more quick paced feel without dumbing them down too much. They're a great way to introduce new players to some of the best Nintendo series. On the other hand, Playing Wii Sports by yourself is like playing Mario Party by yourself. Depressing. I mean, it's still a fun, well-designed game, but it just isn't the same without other people. Being lonely just doesn't give you the same experience. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna need another person for this. One trip to the Me Channel later, and now I have my new greatest enemy, Napkin. Wii Sports was designed around multiplayer. There are very few games that even come close to how much fun Wii Sports is with a group of friends. Nothing compares to laughing with and yelling at your friends as they kick your ass in f***ing tennis. There's no way Napkin will be able to beat that. As much as everyone loves to shit on the Wii for stuff like this, you have to admit, Wii Sports is insanely fun. Nintendo Land is also a great multiplayer game, however, I think Wii Sports is a bit better in this aspect. Nintendo Land feels split between being a single player focused game and a multiplayer focused game. Almost half the games are single player only, and the multiplayer in some of these games just feels forced. I found The Legend of Zelda Battle Quest more frustrating in multiplayer than it was in single player. Everyone shares a health bar, so if you play with more than two people, you die in almost a few seconds. Nintendo Land still has very fun multiplayer, with games like Mario Chase and Luigi's Ghost Mansion being some of the highlights, but Wii Sports was fully designed around playing with friends and family. Nintendo Land has six multiplayer games, each with multiple modes and maps, six single player games, a tournament mode, and a hub world where you can unlock many Nintendo themed items to decorate with. And then Wii Sports has bowling? Wii Sports has a decent amount of content for a free pack-in game, but Nintendo Land has that, plus more. Wii Sports only has five sports and a couple training modes for each of them. Nintendo Land has six multiplayer games and six single player games. To be fair, a lot of the single player games aren't as fleshed out as the sports and Wii Sports, but still. Nintendo Land has over double the amount of games as Wii Sports. And that's not even mentioning the Hub World and Attraction Tour. Nintendo Land has a Hub World to enter all the games from. At the top of the center tower, you can use your coins to play a minigame and earn prizes. Now this serves absolutely no purpose other than showing off to... Someone, I guess? I got the ball board, bitches! 
This doesn't add anything to the main game itself, but it's a really fun feature. Slowly watching the plaza go from being completely empty to being filled with decorations is very satisfying, and it really helps sell the idea that you're building up a theme park. It's awesome to just run around and see all the Nintendo themed decorations in the hub. Really makes me proud that I'm playing a 10 year old party game for the Wii U by myself on a Friday night instead of hanging out with people. You may have had a good time, but I got the grapes from Yoshi. In the hub world, you have access to the attraction tour, a simple tournament style mode where you can challenge your friends at various different games in up to 20 rounds. For what seems like just a simple throwaway mode, it ended up being one of the most fun modes in the game. This is definitely my go-to mode anytime I play this game with friends. If I ever get some. Wii Sports doesn't have nearly as many modes. It has five different sports and a few training modes for each. You can change the color of the bowling ball though. That's gotta count for something, right? Well, clearly someone thought it did. It's a decent amount of content and all the modes are a ton of fun, but Nintendo Land has a bit more content. I think a sixth sport would have gone a long way in adding to the amount of content in the game. Nintendo Land may have had more content, but which game's more replayable? With these being party games, replayability is very important. You're expected to play these games over and over and over again, so they have to be just as fun the 10th time as they were the first. Nintendo Land isn't a one-time deal. Wii Sports is easily one of the most replayable games on the Wii. That's right, fuck off build and race with your infinite tracks. Wii Sports has baseball. No matter how many times I play Wii Sports, it never gets old. These games were designed to be as fun and replayable as possible. It also helps that they were based off of real world sports that have been played for hundreds of years. You could easily get many hours out of this game. While Nintendo Land does have a decent amount of replayability, some of the games are just one and dones. They're not bad games, just not something I really want to play again. I just played Octopus Dance, can't wait to never do it again. Not all the games are like this. Trust me, I have more hours in this game than any one person should have. But I still think Wii Sports is a bit more replayable. Wii Sports will be just as fun 10 years from now as it is today. The whole reason these games were made in the first place was to show off their respective consoles' features. Wii Sports is the perfect showcase of what the Wii Remote can do. The controls are very simple, using motion to feel like you're really playing the sports. Immersion is something that motion controls can do very well. It really feels like I'm throwing a fucking bird! <gasps> you can't get that kind of experience with standard controls, and Wii Sports shows that off perfectly. The Wii U gamepad is one of the most overly complicated controllers of all time. A microphone? What the fuck am I gonna do with that? Nintendo Land was one of the only games to properly use the gamepad. Most other games just threw a map onto the bottom of the screen and called it a day, but Nintendo Land actually used the gamepad screen in unique and creative ways. Most of the games in Nintendo Land are asymmetrical multiplayer, meaning one player has different goals and abilities than the other players. Nintendo Land uses the second screen to show the other player different things. A perfect example of this is Luigi's Ghost Mansion. The ghost is only visible on the gamepad, allowing for a game that is only possible on the Wii U. Nintendo Land also uses the gamepad's other features such as the microphone, the camera, and gyro. But it doesn't use the TV button. Hi, I'd like to cancel my order for a thousand copies of Nintendo Land, please. To be fair, some of these features aren't used in the best way. But Nintendo Land does a great job using the gamepad's features and makes a game that can only be done on the Wii U. Nintendo Land wins this round. In party games, a genre known for simple multiplayer fun, accessibility is very important. Not everyone plays video games, so it's important that party games are easy to learn and understand. Wii Sports easily wins this category. Because all the games are based off of real world sports, the game doesn't need to explain the rules. Even if you've never played them, almost everyone's heard of baseball, tennis, and golf, and understands the basic rules. Nintendo Land just 
isn't as accessible in this way. A lot of the games in Nintendo Land are based off of games most people haven't even heard of before. Have you ever heard of the mysterious Murasame Castle? Please, stop calling me. I blocked you over a year ago. You keep coming to my house to tell me about the Wii U. I've had to move four times, but you keep finding me. I, I don't know how. You found where I work and stood in the parking lot all day asking if anyone owned a Virtual Boy. When, when I went home, you were in my bed holding a copy of Surf's Up on the Wii. Please, leave me alone. That's a weird way to say no. The games in Nintendo Land aren't as easily understandable as the games in Wii Sports. Grandma isn't gonna be playing Metroid Prime. Look at the controls for Metroid Blast compared to the controls of Tennis. Nintendo Land just isn't as easily accessible as Wii Sports. Wii Sports has become one of the most influential games of all time, while Nintendo Land isn't talked about very much. Before Wii Sports, motion controls were just a gimmick. Pretty much every game that used them could have easily worked with just standard button controls. Wii Sports was one of the first games to embrace motion controls and show that they could be used to enhance gameplay. Wii Sports wouldn't be the same without... whatever the hell this is. Nintendo Land released six years after Wii Sports, and by then, it wasn't as important. There were countless motion-controlled games by the time the Wii U released. Motion controls weren't a new idea anymore, and I think that's the main reason Nintendo Land failed. Or maybe that's why. Although, as much as I love Wii Sports, I also hate it for leading to this. For some reason, ever since the Wii, Nintendo has been cramming motion controls into almost all of their games. Sometimes, this genuinely adds to the games and enhances the controls, and sometimes it's this. I think I'm gonna give Wii Sports the point for this round because it showed how motion controls aren't just a gimmick, but that doesn't mean I'm not pissed. So, Wii Sports ended up winning. These are both some of my favorite games of all time, and some of the most fun multiplayer games I've ever played. They used the features of their consoles in wonderful ways, and showed what they could do. Wii Sports was the game that defined the Wii, and Nintendo Land has always been one of my favorite experiences on the Wii U. I love both of these games so much, and while Nintendo Land personally means more to me, I think Wii Sports is a bit better critically. But Wii Sports comes in a stupid cardboard sleeve instead of a plastic case. Nintendo Land wins.